What's going on, everyone? Happy Thursday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update for Thursday, February 15th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily Pandemic Update. We spend about 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes 20, talking about COVID, long COVID, and other viruses that may be a threat to you. If you want to help keep yourself and other people informed, hit that subscribe button down below and share these videos with anyone you know. And also, if you want to help me grow the channel, hit that like button. Let's try and get 100 likes today. The more likes we get, the more they push this through the algorithm, and the more it helps uh, keep more people safe, because that is really my mission here, is to help keep as many people safe and informed as possible. All right, starting off today, we do have several news stories to talk about. The first one, it's not really widespread panic, but there's a band called Widespread Panic. And apparently they are dealing with some illness, and they have to postpone some Chicago shows so they're running chicago apparently they were going to do three shows well someone in a group is dealing with an unexpected health issue let's read what they posted on x dash formerly known as twitter here's the post that they put hello dear friends one of our brothers ran into some unexpected health issues regretfully the band must postpone and reschedule the chicago theater shows to february 28th 29th and march 1st we thank you for your understanding and look forward to seeing you in two weeks. So, yes, they are dealing with some illness. Doesn't state if it's COVID, flu, doesn't state what it is, but they are dealing with an unexpected illness. All right, now we have two things to report on from my website. Yes, we haven't showed my forum website in quite some time, but I did add two news stories that I think are important for you to see. First off, in Ontario, Canada, Kenora, Pinecrest, home for the age in Kenora, Ontario, Canada, faces COVID-19 outbreak affecting 14 residents. Then we come back to the United States, and U.S. Representative Judy Chu, Democrat of California, tested positive for COVID on Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. She is currently 70 years old. I did not look to see if she had a previous case. I don't recall seeing one, but... I will take a look later today to see if she had a previous case, and of course, if she did, I will add that to this archived post, and I will also fix that uh, source of information. It's from The Hill. Looks like I forgot to put the link to that. So we will uh, update both of those things. Now, moving on to this. This is not good news. COVID patients more likely to suffer chronic fatigue. Yes, this is not good. Green Bay, Wisconsin. WBAY is reporting this. We're still learning more about how COVID-19 is impacting anyone who was impacted. Yeah, of course. I mean, each day we're learning about new things that anyone who was infected from COVID can have. And yeah, it makes you wonder, once again, you question yourselves. Why did we rush everything back to normal when we learned so little? Well, well, now we learn this. A CDC report says if you've had COVID, you're at least four times more likely to develop chronic fatigue. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention looked at electronic health records from the University of Washington of more than 4,500 patients. They all had COVID between February 2020 and 2021. The patients were followed for about 11 months compared to 9,000 people who have not had COVID. Researchers found those who tested positive for COVID were 68% at risk of fatigue and four times more likely to develop chronic fatigue in the follow-up period of about a year. Wow. Now, we're not going to read any more. You can read more about this. Uh, I tweeted it out, and I'll probably add this to my site as well, into the archives of our studies, which, by the way, we have a whole section on our website, datareport.info, on studies for long COVID, studies for COVID, anything related to COVID. We also, I believe, have a section for uh, just general, you know, general medical studies as well, although I don't post in that section very much. I guess I should add more to that. All right, take a look at this. This is not good either. UK, almost 12,000, I'm going to repeat this, 12,000 nurses, police officers, and firefighters all sick as waiting list chews bite. A whopping 
8,614 nurses, 2,572 police officers, and 568 firefighters are currently away from work for long-term health reasons, according to the data. That's just far too many people that are out sick at once. That's just totally ridiculous. All right, we're going to just read a headline here. Flu, COVID, RSV. Colorado doctor says 5% of hospitalized patients have two viruses at the same time. Maybe they got flu and RSV at once. Flu and COVID, or COVID and RSV, or something in between. Yeah, it's happening. And we're going to be hearing more from Colorado later on at the second half of this backside of this pandemic update because we do have some weekly Colorado numbers. All right, let's take a look at today's air quality levels across the United States. As I refresh this, as you know, it goes gray about every five minutes. And honestly, I can say this is the best air quality day in quite some time. Yes, there's a few poor areas in the mid-Atlantic region. Yes, a couple in the south, but Really, nationwide, it's all not that bad. You have your usual suspects on the West Coast. It's fireplace season still. And you do have a couple uh, really high numbers in California. But again, it's just very isolated. Down around Los Angeles and San Bernardino, uh, it is a little more moderate, a little concerning there. But on the national level, this is the best we've seen this map in quite some time. There's quite a bit of green today. We'll take it while it lasts. If you want to learn more about weather climate other things i do have another channel where i do talk about weather i do a video there almost daily when when the weather's active which right now it is active there's a storm system that will impact parts of the u.s this weekend in the east and another one that will impact the west coast so later on today i'm going to be uh, dropping a, a video there i'm going to be doing a video for that there's a link to my other channel down below all right moving on now let's take a look at some walgreens data shall we the national positivity trend is 26 percent the prior week was 26.8 percent that's a difference of down 0.8 percent total tests 24,630 the prior week was 26,030 so testing was down by 600 let's take a look at a couple states shall we what is going on in the great state of Delaware? And in Delaware this week, we see the positivity rate is, ooh, this is not good, 34%. The prior week was 22.6%. That's a difference of up 11.4%. 100 tests versus 93. Testing up, positivity up. You know what that means. Their cases are legitimately rising at this point. Now let's take a look at Arkansas. Not much of a change in Arkansas, but... We might be able to say a legit rise here as well. 17.4% positivity rate for COVID this week. The prior week was 17.3%. That's a difference of up 0.1%. And testing, it went up a little bit. 253 tests versus 114. Yes, there may be a rise in cases here. How about we take a look at Louisiana? Positivity rate, 26.9%. Prior week was 30.5%. Difference of down 3.6%. Total tests, 350 versus 338. I suspect next week we could see a rise there. Mardi Gras, that would be the reason for that. Oklahoma this week, the positivity rate is 21.2%. The prior week is 20.9%. Difference of up, 0.3%. Total tests, 339 versus 416. It's just a lack of testing would be the reason why positivity has rose there. Michigan, this is a legitimate rise. Michigan, the positivity rate is 27.6%. The prior week is 26.9%. Difference of up, 0.7%. Total testing, it's up. 521 versus 457. That's a decent sized testing increase. You're likely having a legitimate rise in cases. Let's go somewhere out west now. How about Utah? Utah is 16.3%. Positivity rate, the prior week was 23.3%. Down 7% testing flat, legitimate drop in cases. Arizona, 27.4% this week. The prior week was 28.3%. Positivity is down 0.8%. 445 tests versus 559. That is a legitimate drop. Now let's go to one last place, Florida. Florida this week has 27.4% positivity rate. Prior week was 26.5%. Difference of up 0.9%, but testing is down. 3,173 versus 3,356. This is a product of lower testing. Now let's take a look at some uh, Biobot wastewater 
data here. And I do have to refresh this so it shows for COVID, because I believe there was an update here. We'll see. If not, it's still good to show the levels here. Yep, here we go. There is an update here from Biobot. You can see across the U.S., let's go back here, across the U.S., still going up ever so slightly, but there is good news. You can see here, the Northeast has stabilized. It's not rising anymore. It's just drop it ever so slightly the west coast is seeing an increase in wastewater for covid and there is also a slight ever so slight increase in the south and in the midwest as well which is why you still saw a nationally things still go up ever so slightly let's also take a look at flu and rsv shall we or is there an update for that all right influenza a Across much of the country, it is dropping at this time. In the south, it has risen a little bit. Influenza B in the south, yikes. And in the northeast as well, look at that. It's starting to go up again. It's still going up in the west, and it has leveled off in the midwest at this time. RSV in most regions is dropping, with exceptions to the west, where there was a little bit of a rise once again. Now let's take a look at a few of those wastewater scan sites, shall we? And I want to take a look here at York, Maine today, because I do believe, if I'm correct here, there was starting to, yeah, look at this. York, Maine, since February 1st for COVID, they're seeing a rapid rise again. This is not good. And they are at high levels. So uh, that is very interesting. RSV is low, but it's starting to rise again. Influenza A is high. Influenza B is high. Both are rising at this time with influenza B really rising. Uh, HMPV is not an issue. Norovirus is high, but dropping ever so slightly at this time. And you can see there are no detections of Mpox at this time. Now let's continue on. Let's zoom way out. And we want to check elsewhere around the country. How about we come, you know what? How about we check and see what's going on in Alaska? How about Anchorage, Alaska? We haven't looked there in a while, have we? Let's see what's going on in Anchorage, Alaska. At this time, COVID overall trajectory is down. Uh, rose a little bit on the most recent update, but overall they are trending lower. RSV is high. They were trending lower. Uh, look at this. Maybe a slight rise starting to occur there again. Influenza A is high, flat at this time. Influenza B is high and rising at this time. Norovirus is rising. That's not good. And no detections of Mpox at this time. We'll take a look at some more wastewater sites again tomorrow and probably into Saturday edition of the pandemic update. All right, let's take a look at some data from the CDC now, shall we? In the hospital, 20,772. That is a 10% decrease. We should get an update on this. Uh, so at some point tomorrow, they will update on this. And you can see here, when we look at the county views, you can see here there's different colors here. There's substantial increases. There's moderate increases. You have stable, and you have decreases. And you can see here, there are still some counties in the U.S. that are having substantial and moderate increases. Some of them being populated areas, like look down around Houston. You can see uh, the areas surrounding Houston and up around Dallas. You can see there are still increases going on there at this time on this map. So that is not good to see. I'm just looking here at Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah some of the college town counties are having in Center County, Pennsylvania. Yeah, there's a 12.5% increase in hospital emissions. So that's not good to see on this map. All right, moving on now, let's take a look now at the influenza epidemic status. It's still growing in a few places, likely growing in Pennsylvania, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, and definitely growing in Oklahoma, Kansas, and up in Maine. And then you have other places that are likely declining or declining, and a lot of uh, places that are stable or uncertain. As for COVID, it's likely growing in Maine, Wisconsin, Indiana. Michigan and in Kansas and it is growing for certain in Nebraska and Georgia at this time and then you have areas that are likely declining or are declining and then you have a whole slew of states that have either just stable levels or uncertain levels at this time. I wish they would include on both of these maps an individual little area for Washington DC and New York and I think they do for uh, Washington DC looks yes district of columbia they have but they don't for new york city and i wish they would maybe it's just so small that i can't see it i don't know all right taking a look now here at the latest flu numbers again all this data is going to update again tomorrow and you can see there are still some states that have very high levels such as south carolina 
Arkansas, Texas. You can see even out here in New Mexico and in Wyoming as well. And none are at the second or worst category. That's good to see. Take a look here. We will get some new variant data again tomorrow. JM.1 leads the way at 93.1%. New Jersey today. I'm not even going to run through all the data here. A lot of hospitals did not report. It's 584 hospitalizations. Well, you know what? Let's look at one thing here. Let's look at discharges. Uh, there were still 92 people discharged. Taking a look at Philadelphia EMS calls. 715 EMS incidents were reported yesterday. Taking a live look at what's going on in the burbs. And yikes, I'm seeing a couple things I don't like here. I'm seeing multiple strokes, cardiac emergencies, respiratory difficulties, yeah, that's that's not good to see. How about Chester County, Pennsylvania? Whoa, whole slew of calls going on here. Multiple sick people. We got actually one, two, three sick person, four sick person calls at this time. And we have stroke going on. Yeah, very busy in Chester County right now. That is not good to see. And of course, as you know, with the CDC, you know, uh, lifting, they're going to lift isolation. They're, they're giving all these viruses the upper hand. They really are. I just did a tweet about that a little bit ago. In case you did not get the memo, CDC is doing nothing to prevent disease right now because they are just really giving these viruses the upper hand. More on that for another day. Maybe that'll be a discussion one day, how the CDC is really not doing their job right now. All right, moving on. We don't want to get sidetracked. New York State. 2,651 positive cases in the latest update. Hospitalizations in New York State, 1,651 in the ICU, 177. It's still dropping. It's just not dropping as fast as last week. I think it will probably regain its pace of dropping, probably to finish out the week. All right, take a look now. I told you we had more for Colorado. 144 people in the hospital in Colorado for COVID. And this week's reported cases are down by 653 to 1,904. Moving on now, Chicago, all numbers are down. Hospitalizations, 18. Dead use is down. Uh, laboratory confirmed cases in average per day is 147. Taking a look now, in the state of Washington, all levels are dropping. COVID, emergency department visits, influenza, RSV, all down. Hospital admissions for COVID, influenza, and RSV all down. And the number of people in the ICU with COVID and influenza is down at this time. Let's see. Did we get our update yet out of Massachusetts? It's not 5 o'clock yet, so we might not have. Nope. We'll get our update for uh, Massachusetts tomorrow. The most recent update has 12.5% of emergency department visits war for respiratory disease at this time. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. We'll have all that new CDC data tomorrow and whatever other news pops up for tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. And if you know anyone that needs to see this, by all means, share this with them. The more people we get to see these videos, the more people I can help keep safe and convinced that, hey, all these viruses are a threat to you, and that long COVID is real. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Thursday evening. Thanks for watching.